point where I have gotten glitter all over my face today from this eyeshadow so whatever hey guys what is up welcome back to my channel and finally we are at the part three of Vicksburg which is the third and final part which is called Champion Hill Battlefield which is where actually part of the Civil War took place at this location called Champion Hill Battlefield in Vicksburg, Mississippi. So 1863 is when this actually occurred on the battlefield, which is super, super sad. So this is where the Civil War actually collided in place. They've left a permanent residual energy here on this battlefield. 567 acres, can you even imagine how huge that is? How many lots of land that is? That is gigantic. I also wanted to state that Jay did a couple cinematography shots of um, video footage out the window. They were super raw, typical documentary shots, which were the shots of the actual signs of um, Champion Hill Battlefield, and I love those kind of shots. Like, those kind of shots are the cinematography shots that we love as paranormal enthusiasts because it makes us feel like we are there. Those are those raw shots of it's happening right now and you're seeing it raw. So the owner of the land takes Zach and the crew to this area where he says he's actually seen evil. He says this is the spot where we met evil and he believes it, it is a malevolent energy. I thought the grave markers on the property were intense to say the least. I do know that having grave slots on your own property is very common for a lot of homes in the south and for a lot of plantations because most of the time they owe, they owned a lot of land, a lot of acreage, and so they would just assume their own grave sites on their own land, which technically makes sense if they are going to keep it in the family and pass it on from generation to generation. The sign, the Hill of Death, which is at the peak of the tallest hill, which is where it also saw bloodshed and battle, that spot for some reason made me feel very sad. It just felt very intense and it was almost like this is where it all came to fruition and so many, so many lives were lost. The owner of the property also said something that was very intense that I wanted to repeat, which was sleep was only the option for some of these soldiers and it was the deep sleep of death in which they slept in. And that was really intense to think that, you know, a lot of these people just died and never woke up or, um, you know, died so violently, they don't really know what happened. So I've heard, of course, Gettysburg is similar. You'll hear gunfire, you'll hear cannons going off, things like that, people running. I mean, it just shows you that war itself, it puts such a stain in the atmosphere. Whether it's residual or not, it never goes away. And it's, it's very intense and it's, it's very sad when you get to see a location in person of such a mass gravesite is really what it's become. So suddenly out of nowhere, the wind picks up and Zach says, do I smell campfire or do I smell gunpowder? So that's very interesting. It was almost like they knew that they were there and they wanted to show themselves. And the easiest way, the quickest way is through scents. Um, I've experienced a lot of things like that when I've been on location. So it was really cool that he actually pointed that out. So Bill Chapel is there and he's doing this laser, oh, him and his invention, some of them I don't get. It's an ultraviolet laser. If you happen to even look in the laser, it will burn your retina, which is incredibly intimidating to me. Like, what if the wind picks up and knocks one over? You know, I'm just saying, like, you never know what could happen. And so that was really intense to me. I'm not sure if I really agreed with that experiment. 
Um, especially they set it up and it was this big deal and they ended up not really getting a whole lot out of it. But that's kind of what happens with experiments, right? Is sometimes they work and sometimes it doesn't do a whole lot of anything. So Zach's trying to hurry Bill to explain what these ultraviolet lasers do, which we didn't really get the full thing, like how he built them, why he built them, when he built them. Like we didn't get like the whole story on it because Zach's like, hurry, we have to do this ceremonial thing to wake the spirits and let them know that we're coming. And then they're they're shooting off cannons and uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're not waking the spirits. You're a bunch of boys that are wanting to play soldier is what you are. Mm-hmm. Bunch of boys wanting to go out and shoot guns and cannons. Waking some spirits. <laughs> so we go night vision. We head off. And all of a sudden, this crazy storm hits. And once again, I pointed this out before. Natural disasters. The elements of the earth. You never know what's going to happen. Very, very strange. And all this mud comes in. They can't get to Billy. Poor Billy is left down the hill trying to set up this laser for Bill Chapel. They can't get to him. And basically they have to wait out the storm for Billy to get back. I wonder how long it really took for the storm, um, you know, to settle. It would have been nice to know if, was it 45 minutes, was it two hours? I just feel like the longer the storm was, um, the more dramatic that seems, you know, to be an element issue connected to paranormal activity. So I wish they would have filled us in on, on how long the storm was just because it would have helped us understand like, wow, these spirits really just don't want them there. In the meantime, I hope Billy's taking shelter wherever he is with this laser because like usual, he's the good guy getting the short end of the stick. Poor Billy. I did see the black masses that were breaking the beam constantly, and the only thing that I could think of is it looked like soldiers were running in and out of it constantly, didn't it? Because it wasn't really one shape or form, but it was like constant crossing in the beam. So I, I found that compelling. Whatever the beam was, even though I didn't really get a full description on the beam, one voice did end up coming through the beam, um, but that was it. So unfortunately, that was a little bit of a failure of an experiment, but that comes along with science and paranormal is you have to try things and unfortunately you have to show, you know, even on a epic show like Ghost Adventures that big experiments cost a lot. That probably cost a lot to put it together for Bill as an engineer and it failed and they still had to show the failure of it because that science is not everything works. So now we get to a point where Bill Chapel is actually by himself and he says that he has now played ultrasonic sounds that mimic battlefields. So not only like possibly chants and music, but something to trigger these soldiers to know that they're there to communicate. And then after that is when they start getting this strange ball of energy that is around Jay and Zach. And Bill gets so scared, he ends up going to lock himself in his car. The only thing I was worried about with Zach and Jay is they were driving that little golf cart and or ATV, I'm not sure what it was. And it's so dark and they're seeing this ball of energy and at any point they could have fallen in a gulch or something like that. I feel like sometimes these energies like this ball of light, they try to catch your attention to catch you off guard. It's almost like mesmerizing where you're going to follow this light or the apparition and you keep following it and all of a sudden you've driven off a cliff in, in pitch black darkness. You don't really know where you're going. So the only advice I have to you guys on that is as crazy and as creepy as that sounds, it could happen. So just please make sure you're aware of your surroundings and you're not just totally captivated by this ball of energy, which is really cool that they caught it. Obviously that was paranormal activity. There's so many acres of land. No one would have been out in the middle of nowhere. You don't want to be so captivated by it that you're driving and all of a sudden you fall off a cliff. You're dead and there's no GPS because you're in the middle of nowhere and then nobody ever finds your body. That got morbid really fast. I didn't mean for it to. So Zach does call out to this ball of energy. It says, what are you? And then all of a sudden the ball of energy disappears. So this is where Zach says that he's getting flash images and visions of hell. Um, of basically dark creatures. Um, it's almost like a nightmare while you're awake. I am so glad that he talked about this. When I've been at a really high EMF, you know, sort of location where the energies are not afraid to interact with you, I have had almost like nightmares while you're awake. I feel like the more you dabble with paranormal, and I don't mean like 
the occult as in witchcraft or, or anything like that or even um, like Satanism or anything. I'm just talking about communicating with the other side. Just as a plain old investigator, I feel like the more you dabble with that, the more you communicate, the more you enter their realms when you go investigate, the more you continue to open this door of becoming not only an empath but becoming psychic. And I don't like those titles because, of course, when you think of someone that is psychic, you're going to think of Chip Coffee or Chris Fleming, and it's someone that can possibly see the future and, and can read your tarot cards. I'm not necessarily talking about that. Also, being psychic is getting visions, and it happens to me sometimes. I talked about getting followed home from the haunted museum from Zach's, and I was getting this image in my house of the woman that looked like the nun from American Horror Story. And I know someone reached out to me and said, well, your your brain could be um, you know, trying to make up an image of what you think it's seeing. Well, whatever it is, that's what I saw. <laughs> like, I don't know if my brain made that image up or if that's actually what I saw. Obviously, I wouldn't be lying to you guys and not tell you the truth. I was seeing this big white apparition flash in my house. And finally, I was in my closet, like, preparing for filming. And the one night that it happened, I turned around f to be right in my face. And I got this image of what it looked like to be those really creepy nuns on American Horror Story where the eyes were, like, you know, bleeding or liquefying. So I'm just so glad that Zach said, flash images, visions of hell, dark creatures, a nightmare while you're awake. Because this is that big element where people are like, I want to ghost hunt, but I don't want to see anything. I want to ghost hunt, but I don't want to get followed home. You don't make up the rules. <laughs> like, As a ghost hunter, you don't make up the rules. You can say, I'm going to have boundaries for my house. You're going to say, if something follows me home, I will get it out, which I have to do myself. But you don't make up the rules when it comes to ghost hunting. The universe does, whatever that means. I don't make up the rules in not wanting to see flash images or having these like sporadic few second nightmares while you're awake. But I have had that happen where I almost feel like I get tranced or teleported into that time like Zach said he did where I'm seeing what's going on and obviously having an imagination is one thing and then actually really feeling like you're actually seeing what's happening is a whole nother thing. It's definitely two completely different things. And it's scary sometimes. Like, those those aren't fun. Like, <laughs> don't be like, oh, I wish I could do that. And it's not the funnest thing. Like, I've seen some things that I necessarily haven't wanted to see. There was one time where I had been meditating and I, I mean, this was a, this was a while ago. This is, you know, when I, um, probably a little bit after Paranormal Challenge and I had kind of said out loud to, you know, my spirit guides or whatever. I was like, I think that I'm ready to be able to visually see things that interact with me. And so basically I had said, can you give me a test? Like, can the universe or my spirit guides or whatever, can you give me a test to see something at some point, just surprise me, to see if I can handle it? To see if I can handle it. I literally said all of this out loud. So a couple of days went by and I kind of had forgotten, you know, that I had done this. I thought, well, if it happens, it happens. I kind of assumed that I would go to the Stanley Hotel and see something. Like, I'd seen things before, but I really wanted to know what it was like to get a really crystal clear image of something. So a few nights had passed and I'd kind of forgotten about this and I was sitting there and I thought I was hearing water drip. I thought I was hearing water run and I hadn't been anywhere to investigate. So I didn't, I knew I didn't have anything that had followed me. I had never experienced this before and I kept hearing like water drip and it was all over the house. It wasn't in one certain area of my house at the time. And all of a sudden I got this sense out of nowhere that there was a little girl in my house. And once again, let's not jump to conclusions of being demonic. I didn't sense this was demonic. You can just feel the energy when something is that dark. I just sensed it was a real little girl, like not a real human little girl, but a real girl spirit. And I couldn't figure out where it was coming from, and then I kept hearing water. So later that night, I did end up falling asleep. I didn't really have a nightmare, but I did have that feeling. I must have been in REM sleep or, you know, one of the one or two first phases of sleep that I decided to wake up because I just had that feeling someone was watching over me or someone was standing over me. At the time, I wasn't sure maybe it was a roommate. 
maybe someone had come in drunk in my room, I don't know. And so I woke up and I was obviously sideways in bed and I woke up to seeing a little girl who was about um, probably nine or maybe seven, somewhere in there. And she had drowned, obviously. Like, you could tell she drowned, which is where the water was coming from. She was very pale blue, illuminating kind of in the night. Even though there were no lights on, she was illuminating. And um, all wet from head to toe. And she was wearing kind of like a nightgown from, like, probably the early 1900s, maybe all the way up to the 1930s, somewhere in there. You could just tell by looking at her, she was dead and that she had drowned and she was just dripping water all over. And she, she was just watching me sleep. It was very, very innocent, I will tell you that. Hearing that story, you guys will probably freak out because you'll be like, I don't want no little girl standing over me that drowned. I did freak out, I'll be honest, and I remember closing my eyes really tight, and I was like, out loud, okay, I can't handle it, okay, okay, that was my test, I can't handle it, and I opened my eyes, and she was gone. It was very real to me. What I was seeing was not, it was not my imagination. Obviously, I'd been asleep. Um, I did not put two and two together of hearing the water, the little girl, and then seeing a girl that drowned. It wasn't like I had made that scenario up. It was something that I saw clearly with my eyes and the best way I can describe it is the exact same way Zach did. Flash images, nightmare while you're almost awake. Like I had that sense of her energy that something was staring over me. So I don't get a lot of visions since that scared me so bad. I've had several visions that are rather macabre, that are rather um, gory, that I, I don't like to see gory things and so I've tried to set up boundaries maybe with my guides, with myself, with my higher self, whatever that if something appears to me or I get a vision that it's not a gory one so you can do that, that takes practice over time that's another video that we can do later but I just wanted to point out how important it is to note that the more you're in paranormal the deeper you're going to get with your intuition Aaron is with Billy, Bill Chapel's by himself, and they all start hearing actual gunfire going on around them. And Bill Chapel says the wind is picking up and he's looking all over the place. And he says that he feels like there's people running all around him. Um, this is the first time I have personally ever seen Bill Chapel get scared. I really like him when they take him on investigations because... Obviously, in order for Bill Chapel to be building this equipment, he's a believer, but I think he's extremely skeptical, which is good. I like that. Um, but he doesn't get scared very easy. He doesn't have a lot of um, taunting moments where he feels like he's being endangered or threatened. He tends to really keep a poker face a majority of the time. And so... Bill ends up being like, hello, and then he's calling out like, Billy, Aaron, like he's in a panic. Like he hears people moving all around him, branches breaking, and nobody is there. I like that Zach also let us know as an audience that um, there is a actual law in Mississippi that's illegal to shoot firearms at night. So that rules out anyone. I mean, it doesn't rule out everybody. It doesn't mean that there isn't people being reckless, but... Remember, we're talking about 550 plus acres here, 567 or something. So it's the probability of them being around people is slim to none. Once again, this goes back to Gettysburg where they've had the same sort of instances where people have witnessed actual lights being flashed, like a gun going off, like with gunpowder, along with cannons going off and the sounds of cannons. This is very similar to the same experiences they have in Gettysburg. So once again, we have Bill Chapel freaking out and he's again in flight or flight mode. So this is his parasympathetic, sympathetic system for neuroscience going into action. And what does Bill do? <laughs> he walkies Billy and says, I'm gonna lock myself in the car because I don't feel safe. That, my friends, is when you know an investigation is legitimate. If the engineer himself says, screw this, I'm locking myself in the car where I'll be safe until all y'all are done. <laughs> really cool thing, Zach decided to use an eight millimeter filming camera. Freaking awesome. 
I actually got to learn how to use a 16 millimeter film camera in school, so it's a, it's a, about the same. It's the old school film reels, but that is so freaking awesome that he's implementing some old school ways. Um, I remember there was like the Polaroids used to be used back in the day along with like baby powder. Maybe as a community we should bring back some of that old school stuff. I mean I know we like the tech and the up to date tech which I'm totally down with. You guys know that. But maybe it's time to bring out some uh, kind of old school stuff. What do you think? So now we're back with Zach. He's seeing this ball of light. He's yelling at it to show itself. Why didn't they have a girl there to investigate? Once again... I'm just saying, maybe they should bring me on as a guest. What do you guys think? I don't know. The only reason I'm saying that is, okay, you're in a battlefield of Civil War soldiers, okay? And they are, like, so concentrated on, like, battling. Back in those days, women were not allowed to sign up for, you know, to, to battle for the army or the military or... Confederates or anything like that. So if it is residual activity where these two sides are just going at it constantly What would interrupt it more than bringing on a girl investigator in those fields? I mean there were no women at that time in that area remotely you could immediately bring in a girl to give you some epic evidence surrounded by all male apparitions. I'm sorry, but this was a big mistake that Ghost Adventures made. They're losing investigations by not having a chick involved. That's all I'm gonna say. I did love one of the last um, pieces of evidence they captured. Zach said, um, what city did you take? And then one of them said Vicksburg. So at the end, Jay and Zach, they're together. And Jay thinks he sees Zach run through the woods. Like he sees a full-bodied apparition run through the woods. And it really startles Jay. And then all of a sudden, it really throws them both off. Like kilter. Like they were really investigating great together. They were grounded. And now all of a sudden, they are all discombobulated. I actually really loved this part of the episode. And the reason I liked it so much was it's very Blair Witch. Like, it's very raw and authentic, and they're freaking out, and they're running. And I personally love those kinds of investigations because I feel like that is when you know it is so real. Like, you know that your world is colliding with theirs, like, on a serious, like, supernatural level that it's causing you to have, like, instinctual fear and, like, freakouts. So I love those kind of investigations. So honestly, that Blair Witch effect, even though it was, like, reality documentary filming, I thought it was freaking great. There was a bone that appeared at the end and the back of the ATV, like, golf cart thing. Zach was kind of freaking out because he was like, is this kind of an omen? Because this is that dark ravine where the owner of the land said, if you want to meet evil, this is where to do it. So I'm not sure how I felt about that. They did have evidence of showing all of the equipment being put in and the bone wasn't there. And then all of a sudden the bone appeared. Um, whatever it was, it was strange. I'm not a person that likes archaeology and enjoys, like, any sort of, <laughs> like, animal bones or human bones. Since I'm an empath, if I'm around a bone or I pick a bone up, sometimes I'll start to get pains in whatever bone that is or whatever the injury was that caused their death. So I'm not someone that, like, even taxidermy, anything like that, because I get so in tune to it as being an empath. Thank God there was no review at the end of this one. Oh, like I was like, I was like, come on, let's end this on the Blair Witch note. This is a good place to stop it. And it did. We didn't get another review like the other two Vicksburgs. Let's hope they don't do that anymore. I wasn't a fan of it. It had like a mixture of Ghosts of Shepherdstown. I mean, obviously way, way better, but mixed with Ghost Hunters and like... You know, I hate to say it, but I feel like the community is a little bit of a rival. Like, if you're a Ghost Hunters fan, you're not usually a fan of Ghost Adventures. And if you're a Ghost Adventures fan, you're not really a fan of Ghost Hunters. I'm not saying you can't, like, cross a little bit, but it's because you have two very different perspectives. Ghost Hunters, they look at everything as a skeptic, and everything can be resolved through construction or plumbing or the house creaked and then ghost adventures they want to find like stuff on the sls they use tech they use engineering they use their gut instinct which is the way i like to investigate so i feel like whichever side you fall on 
it's because that's how you investigate. And I know a lot of you guys investigate the same way I do, the same way Ghost Adventures does. Another really big quick announcement, which is I will be going on October 31st to Zach's Museum. I'm having a slight little meet and greet with some of you guys I know will be there for um, his Halloween special. He is allowing ovuluses um, and I think EVPs, I think only digital recorders. So I am going to take um, two of our ovuluses and, D and um, digital recorders. We're going to go as a group and I'm going to do meet and greets with you guys. But I wanted to know if you guys could do me a favor on social media. Whenever you can, even if you do it a few times, I will be so grateful. Shout out to Zach. I want you guys to tag me and Zach in the tweet or Facebook or Instagram, whatever. And I want you to tell him that you want me to be on as the investigator of the museum, that you guys would come to the museum to investigate with me if he brought me on. There hasn't been any word yet. No news is good news, but if he knows you guys want me there, then he's gonna wanna bring me on to investigate with you. And of course, I want to investigate with you guys. So please do me that huge favor and let him know that you want me to be the resident ghost hunter at the museum and that you would for sure come and investigate with me at his museum because I think that would be so epic and so fun. So now that we've done that, we are now doing another surprise giveaway. Surprise if you made it to the end of the video. There's only going to be one giveaway for this video. You have to give me a thumbs up. You have to subscribe to my channel. You have to leave a comment below and make sure you guys follow me on social media. The next video I've decided I'm doing is going to be something that is long overdue, which is spiritual warfare. So make sure you wait for that one. There's going to be early uploads next week for Halloween. Right after Ghost Adventures episodes, I'm going to sit down and do a review and talk about it immediately after it happened and I'm gonna get those uploads as soon as I can. I don't usually do midweek uploads, but I will for the sake of Halloween because it's our time of year. I hope I get to see you guys at the museum. Please give Zach a shout out for me on social media about being the resident ghost hunter and I will catch you guys next time and I can't wait to see some of you on Halloween at the museum. We'll see you guys later. Hell yeah.